Alright, time now is 9.55 a.m. on March 17th. Oh man, okay. I slept from 3 a.m. to 6.45. Um, I think I woke up a couple times in the middle, but nothing drastic, really. Yeah, I'm kind of sleepy, truth be told. But also, it's not that bad. It's just 6 hours and 45 minutes. Um, yeah, and uh, today is going to be very interesting. In fact, I bet today will be one of the most interesting days of round 3. So, um, yeah, um... Yeah, I, um, oh, sheesh. Okay, so today's going to be a very interesting day, very epic indeed, because uh, I will be meeting several people um, at different points in time at one location today, and it's going to be the most insane extravaganza ever. I'm going to pack up for this. I'm going to bring my big backpack, and I'm going to pack up a bunch of snacks, a bottle of water, because I know this shit is going to be crazy. I'm going to pack up um, a camera, my film camera, because I'm going to get bored. I'm going to spend a lot of time today sitting down and waiting, so I'm going to be charging, bringing my portable charger so that I can charge my phone with it. <sighs> but a quick rundown of what's going to happen today. Um... Or what I expect to happen. First of all, at 1.30, I will arrive at the college campus, that is CMD. I will be seeing Evelyn, and I will be giving the uh, Yoshikage Kira figurine to her. And uh, she's probably going to sell me $7 back. Gracias. And then I'm going to show off my manga, show off my hentai, and show off a figurine to her. Hopefully she enjoys it. Then, um... Yeah, after that, um... Um, that's awesome and stuff. And then after that, what's going to happen is that, um, film 32, Professor Antonio's film 32 will take place and I will be seeing Cliff, but not only that, but people such as Justin, Javier, Lauren, um, I think Chiara, the Italian woman, um, um, and also a few others, I will be seeing them. Most importantly, I want to speak to Cliff about two things in particular. One is um, about Night Owl, the secret society that the um, that my college has. But also about uh, color grading my uh, short film, Love and Death, which is going to come out soon, ASAP. Um, but also this is all put into new context because Michelle has a crush on Cliff. Uh, next thing you know is that during film 32, they're going to do some camera assembly shit. And that means uh, Leslie will show up. And that's also put into new context, given that I recently found out that Leslie had a crush on Theo. Um, and I thought Leslie is a pretty interesting person, so I would like to dig even deeper into her psyche. Um, next thing you know, um, yeah, what's the next thing? Betsy and Michelle will show up at some point later in the afternoon, uh, for the race relay rehearsal, and that's going to be extremely dangerous, because Professor Cuccio will simultaneously show up for the table read, which is the main course of today. Um, where the script of the film 33 will be revealed and um, multiple professors will show up at the same time. Antonio, the Indian professor, Drew, everyone will show up and it's going to be a um, Game of Thrones wedding type scene. Um, and I'm sure a few people from my film 33 will show up there as well, which is going to be extremely chaotic, intense, nerve wracking. And um, full of surprises. So yeah, that's basically today. And then I will be standing in the middle of it all. Because I'm the detective. And oh boy, I feel so cold right now. I'm going to eat a couple 
cookies and drink some milk this morning. I hope, I swear to God, if not, I get a stomach ache or something. Also, I'm waking up this early because I still have four episodes of anime to catch up. And then immediately after that, I'll review that anime. That is Oremo. I watched three episodes last night. I plan to watch six, but I ended up only watching three last night. Um, yeah. So, um, this is funny. Um, man, I swear to God, if I get a stomach ache. A couple days ago, I think last Tuesday, this happened to me. I just randomly got a stomach ache in the middle, in, in the morning, and I couldn't film a review because of it. Um, I really hope the same doesn't happen to me. Um, oh man. Okay. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for today. Um, I really want people like Natalie and Mary uh, to see this. This is me. I'm basically the detective again, but this time more powerful, more resourceful. This is the updated version of the detective. I wish they could see this version of me, you know. I, I want them to be proud of me. I want Mary and Natalie to look at my Instagram stories and be proud of me. And, and they do. They still do look at my Instagram stories, which I'm really happy about. Um, even though Mary's probably just doing tap, 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 tap and scrolling through Instagram. Um, at least she's tapping through me. Um, yeah. Yeah. Finally. Six years of training has been put to good use. The detective is reborn today. Gracias. All right, here we go. Here comes the insanity. Here we go, folks. I'm like half an hour late. It's 2.03 p.m. right now. Oh, I hope Cliff is still there. Fingers crossed the class didn't end early. Side. Fuck. Okay. okay, I saw Betsy and Tova over there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Are they there? I swear to God. Ooh, the tripods. Yeah. Ooh, who's a countless loser? <laughs> Manuel Gamero. Oh. But yeah, if you go in here, you see bodega boats. Yeah. And you just go in there, hi, I'm here for bodega boats. I didn't even know this thing exists. And there's a cabinet, and you just... Oh. Huh. Intriguing. Glass window. Isn't it the IXD room? I don't know, it's just a conference room. Wait, what what kind of pizza is this? From from uh, Alright, time now is 11.03 p.m. Oh boy! <laughs> okay. Let's get it started, baby. So, <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, <laughs> shit, shit. So time now is um 11.03 p.m. Just finished dinner and oh my God, buckle your seatbelts because I have a lot of information to spill. So everything today went strategic, strategy, down to the minute details. I am so fucking good as a detective. I am so fucking good at my job. You have no idea. You have zero clue. Um, I was late for about 35 minutes. I was supposed to arrive at 1.30. I ended up arriving at 2.05 and Evelyn texted me over Instagram saying, Hey, you know, I'm about to leave soon. 
Uh, like, when will you come? I just didn't expect to wait this long. Apparently, her class ended at 11 p.m., so she's been waiting for about four hours now. And uh, I will be waiting for four hours, too, because my table read starts at 6. So, um... Yeah, um, I, I found, um, Evelyn sitting right upstairs, right outside room 271. And, uh, it was a little awkward at first because I haven't seen her in a while. But we sat down and we just talked and uh, talked and talked all the way until 3 p.m. I thought she had to leave at 2.30, but we basically went over time. And I gave her the small Yoshikage uh, Kida figurine. And uh, I was low-key hoping that she would pay me back. Like she would like ask me, oh, how much is it? I'm going to pay you back. But she never asked. But you know what? That's fine. That's okay because it's only 980 yen, which is about 7 US dollars, which is about 50 Hong Kong dollars. So, you know what? That's totally fine. You know, that's totally fine. In contrast, I gave Pepper $17, 17 US dollars worth of gloves, which is over twice the cost of that fucking Kira figurine. And she probably never wore it once because she doesn't care about me. And she's probably not going to give anything in return to me. So, um, yeah, you know what? Fine. I'll give it to her as a gift. It's totally fine. Um, but yeah, you know, after that, I even showed off my, uh, hentai dojin, my mangas as well, as much as I hate bringing it out to the public and uh, I'm risking the fact that Evelyn's hands are dirty and whatnot, I'm actually going to spray it down with an alcohol um, later. Um, you know what? She deserves it. She's a real Jojo fan. She's a whole anime fan, so i got to show off my mangas to her. It's a little bent. Unfortunately, the hentai book is a little bent after being in my backpack for a while. Which is sad, but um, even she realizes that I try my best to keep it clean when she saw my Tomi manga, which I told her it's the first manga I ever bought. She's like, wow, it's so white and crisp and clean. Like, damn, you've been keeping it. And I'm like, yeah, I've been keeping it. I've been keeping it away from sunlight. I've been keeping it against moisture. Like, ooh, I've been keeping it clean. But yeah, she's nice about it, and we talked about anime and manga and our love for them for a while. Um, she was, she wasn't, we weren't awkward when we looked at the porn hentai. We were just trying to avoid professors or adults walking by. She kept laughing, she, she flipped a page, she's like, oh, yep. She's like, oh, yeah. But yeah, it was kind of wholesome, and she talked about how she went through her surgery, apparently her ovaries are bleeding her left ovary is bleeding and it created sort of this blood pouch and she had to do this surgery and it hurt so much and she said wow being a woman sucks i don't recommend it and i'm like yeah damn but yeah um i i'm kind of like this as much as i love hanging out with her and talking to her and all that stuff i got other shit so again today's plan my strategy is evelyn Evelyn, Cliff, Leslie, Betsy, Table Read. And I need to hit all five of these. So I can't wait to just go downstairs and find Cliff. So at 3 p.m., she left. We hugged. We said goodbye. And I said, hey, maybe in the future Fridays we'll meet again. She's like, for sure. So that's that. Um, Actually, right before I went upstairs to see Evelyn, I passed by the cafe and... Being a detective, I peeked in and I saw Tova the black girl and Betsy the queen of the film club, the Latina girl, Betsy. So Betsy and Tova sitting together around a table um, right at the edge, right at the window side. So I peeked in and I said hi to them and I quickly passed by. You know, So I'm an interesting player. I'm a key player in this game. Betsy and Tova probably saw me and they were thinking like, oh... He's already on the move. He's already going somewhere. Like, goddamn, he's so unpredictable. Goddamn. Um, but yeah, I went back down and I spoke to Betsy and Tova a little bit. And they seem really chill. And honestly, they're not as drama-loving as, or as intense as Michelle is. Um, but they do seem kind of concerned with what's going to happen. And then um, I went to the Film 32 classroom. I was worried for a moment. Like, oh my god. Did Film 32 end early today? 
So I literally went outside of the studio, the sound stage where film 32 is taking place and I peeked in and oh, they're there. Oh, so I went back to the cafe and spoke with Betsy and Tobo a little bit. Nothing all that special, you know, just being nervous about what's going to happen next. And then Betsy's like, oh, they're coming out. And I went outside and they are indeed coming out. So I thought I, I saw Cliff. Uh, I saw um, Miles, Justin right off the bat. Miles looked like a 1700s British army soldier with a goofy little cap. And this, the classic trench coat, like, I don't know what's up with him. He's also growing his hair out. Everyone's growing their hair out, uh, hilariously enough. Miles is doing that. Um, and Javier, I didn't recognize him at first because the last few times I saw him, he has short hair, but he's growing his hair out. I'm like, oh, I almost didn't recognize you. And he's like, oh, you're growing your hair out too. And I'm like, yeah. So we're all growing our hair out because we're all um, fed up with this Los Angeles lifestyle. Um, but um, yeah, essentially that's that. Um, I, um, yeah, um, I also saw, um, I didn't see Lauren. I didn't see a lot of other people, but, um, yeah, um, I saw Cliff at the end. He didn't wear any glasses today. Apparently he slept for one hour this morning and his eyes were just black, basically. I quickly questioned Miles on the whole positive comments thing because again a couple days ago I found out that Miles and a bunch of other people are forced to write ultra positive comments under the college short films and he's like what and I said yo you didn't answer me and Miles was like what I didn't answer you I hate doing that to people let me check and Miles was like oh yeah a month ago I took film 31 online and it's like it's Cuchillo slash Antonio, it's completely online and um, they one of the assignments is basically we have to write positive comments. So that's fucking lame. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's that. That answer is cleared, it's clear as day. And then I spoke to Cliff. Now I'm hitting my second point. So, um, I spoke with Cliff and I, I, I don't know why, but I came off like a energetic guy with ADHD. I had so much to talk to him about. Um, I talked to him about, um, a bunch of stuff like, oh, how's film 32 today? And he asked me how's film 33 and I'm like, oh, I don't know. Nothing's happened so far. And at one point, you know, I had to do this. I had to ask him about the Night Owl, which is the secret organization. Um, yeah, so... Bef I was like, oh, Cliff, come here, come here. I can't show anyone else this, but I know you know about this. And before I could take it out, he's like, oh, is this Night Owl? Like, take out the pamphlet. And I'm like, yeah. And he said he's never been to one. And I asked him how he learned about this. And he's like, oh, I forgot. It's been so long ago. But yeah, apparently he's never been to one. And he's not interested in joining one either because he's, he's, he's not a party person. Neither am I. But I told him, hey, I'm in California. I want to experience at least once. So that's that. And then, um, yeah, I followed Cliff around. Cliff went to the storage room where I found Leslie and Drew, the teacher assistant. More like the assistant teacher. He's a teacher, but also an assistant. Um, and... Um, yeah, very, very interesting scene right there saw Leslie and I don't know why but after learning about Leslie's crush and all that shit like I'm beginning to have an incentive to act mysterious in front of her but I just can't help it because I already showed my plain normal self to her so I just can't act mysterious at all I just lost the ability to do that so I just started acting really plain in front of her and I was like hi what's going on um but yeah, um, Drew led um, Cliff up to the editing room, um, 282 I believe, and I went in for the first time and 
It was a really nice editing station with three monitors, crazy color grading panel. It's like a DJ panel, but for color graders. And it's so damn good. And it's so much fun. And I sat there and watched Cliff edit and poke fun a little bit for about half an hour. And then I left again. Javi at some point entered as well. We chilled out for a little while. But yeah, Cliff said he's going to stay in the editing room for about a couple hours and he's going to go back home and sleep because he's just so sleepy. So that's that. So I was hungry. I really packed up today. I got film camera. I also um, I also um, predicted that, you know, because I'm going to be waiting for a long time, I'm going to sit down in the cafe and continue working on the Virgin script. Um, I don't know. I brought a portable charger with me because I know I'll be running out of battery. I was prepared, you know, and I got... I packed up some Sour Patch Kids watermelon flavored. I packed up a small pack of potato chips. I packed up a, a grilled biscuit and I ate them all. I ate three uh, Sour Patch Kids gummies, but um, I ate all of that other stuff because I was really hungry. And then I was with Betsy and Tova again. And then Betsy, it was around 4 p.m. ish already. Um, 4 something p.m., like 4.30 p.m. I think. And Betsy walked to um, outside the soundstage where she had to ask Drew about uh, vacuums and whatnot because she needs to clean the place up. So the plan is because the table read is going to take place at the soundstage. So Betsy's going to do the race relay play rehearsal literally outside of the soundstage at the empty area. And then suddenly news came that the table read will be will occur upstairs on the second floor at a conference room. Oh, what the heck's going on? And now Betsy's like, oh, so I can use a soundstage now. So now she's going to use a soundstage. So that's when I saw Drew and Leslie once again. And I spoke with Leslie a little bit. Uh, Drew walked away and Drew was like, okay, let's continue this conversation next time. And I'm like, what conversation? And Leslie's like, well, nothing, like life philosophy. Because one time, Leslie's tidying some stuff, packing some stuff in the storage room. And out of randomness in classic Leslie fashion, she was like, what's the meaning of life? And then for days afterwards, Drew has been talking about this. Because apparently Drew was a philosophy major. So that's pretty interesting. Um... And um, yeah, I and Leslie stood outside of the soundstage at that little narrow road, and we started talking. I really kept my guard up. Um, not really guard up, but like I really started like noticing, you know. I was being really observant, because again, Betsy and Michelle said that Leslie seemed very depressed. They can't be more wrong. She seemed totally freaking fine. But then again, you never know. But she seems really fine in front of me. And she was all jolly. She had a skateboard going. I didn't even know she skateboards. Kind of reminds me of Mary a little bit maybe. And um, yeah, she said she has to leave a little bit later. Because tonight she at 7.30 she's going to watch The Shining on a big screen with her friends. Um, at some David Griffin theater. Some theater is playing The Shining, so I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. Um, so that's that. And then Leslie, out of curiosity, asked me, oh, so how's film 33? Like, uh, I heard you you know all the drama. You know all the drama, right? And I just can't help it. I want to act all mysterious in front of her. But I just, I basically poured out my evil side. Like, maybe this is what I want to show to Leslie, you know? I really started to really show my detective side and I started smiling and laughing and like, oh yes, oh I know everything, oh yes, yep. And I'm not fucking kidding when I said I know everything because I spoke with Betsy and Toba and both of them don't seem to know as much as I do. Michelle knows a lot, but she's not even in fucking film 33. I know a lot, I know everything right now. I might be out of the entire CMD, I might be the one with the most knowledge in all the drama and caught up with everything. So, 
I literally know everything. So when I say I know everything, I'm not exaggerating. I was smiling and I was saying, oh, I know everything. It's true. I know everything. And it bent my fucking ass that Leslie doesn't even know that I know Leslie's secret. That she had a crush on Theo, which is so disappointing. Um, I know it. I know everyone and everyone. Everyone I've spoken to, I, I know secrets about. I just do. And Leslie's like, oh, yeah, detective. And I'm like, hold on. How did you know that I'm the detective? And Leslie's like, oh, your Instagram. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah, I wrote it on my Instagram bio. Because, of course, blah, blah. <laughs> And Leslie's like, haha, Jung Er Bien, Jung Er E, which is like eighth grade syndrome, Chun Bio. And I'm like, yeah, I know it's Chun Bio, but I embrace it. It's truly me, you know. So, um,. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, and then she left. And I'm satisfied with this conversation. I hope I meet her again someday in the future. Because again, she's by far the most interesting girl I've met so far. She's more, unfortunately, she's more interesting than Pepper. Like I always said, if, if there's a girl who has the looks of Pepper, has the personality of Leslie, and has the restraint of Aoba, then she would be perfect. Then she would be a 10 out of 10. But unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, so yeah, that's that. But um, I asked Leslie who told her that I know all the drama. Apparently, Cliff told her. Not surprised. I always ask people, who told you this? Just to make sure if there are other people who is out of my loop. You know, always detect if there's more out there. Um, but yeah, Leslie's gone and I continue to help me and Tova continue to help Betsy push things into the sound stage. Drew returns and I mentioned it to him like, oh, I heard you have a 600 favorite films list. And he's like, oh yeah, at least 600. Just give me your email and I will send it to you. And I'm like laughing, ha ha ha. Um, and then for the next 40 minutes or so, me, Tova and Betsy basically chilled at the sound stage. So yeah, I thought I'm going to be like taking photos with my film camera and like writing the version and stuff. I didn't even have time for that because I constantly have someone to talk to. So I started to speak to Betsy and Tova about things, about the drama. Betsy has this really lightweight but also looking very cinematic camera, like a Sony NX5 or something. And um, yeah, I sat on a chair and we started talking and... Uh, pretty interesting i at some point i and tova left that sound stage to go upstairs to look for the bodega bites which is a place where we could get free snacks i didn't even know that something like this exists until today and on the way i passed by cliff's editing room and i knocked on the door to introduce cliff to tova cliff and tova apparently took the same film class together film one in fall of 2021 and cliff remembers tova um, as the girl whose last name is the n-word. Apparently, it's not pronounced like the n-word. It's actually pronounced Negus. But, um, yeah, that's that. So, um, Tova brought me to the Bodega Bites place. Turns out, it's not open. So, we walk back. And as we walk back, I asked Tova, So, you know a lot of drama, right? You're telling Betsy all the drama, right? And Tova's like, man, to be honest... She's no telling me all the drama. Like, she knows more than I do. And I'm like, oh, really? And Tova's like, yeah, real, really. Like, I really don't know anything. And I asked Tova, oh, so do you know about the, um... <laughs> so do you know about the, um... The whole, um... Um... You know, Antonio and Cuchillo beef? And she's like, what? And I asked her, oh, so do you know about the child labor law violation stuff? And she's like, what? And I asked, and I asked her, do you know about the never silly drama? And she's like, what? Wow. So she doesn't really, so she probably doesn't know. I truly know everything. So me, Tova, Betsy went back to the soundstage. Thank God I got snacks. So I started eating food again because I was really hungry. And we talked about how, um, there are several people to look out for in Film 33, especially Theo. I brought up Theo, and they started talking about, yeah, Theo has a big ego. You know, we need to look out for him. Um, and also, the Trinity Gang. So apparently, 
um, according to Tova, because Tova was in Friday Film 32 last semester with the Trinity Gang and Thomas and Carly and Theo. So somehow Theo and the Trinity Gang started getting along really well and they even had dinner or lunch together at some point last semester. Carly also got along with them really well. At first, in Friday 32, Carly and them didn't get along, but in the later parts, they started to. Another very important information to definitely keep in mind is that Jaden and Trinity are dating. They are couples. They are a couple. So, uh, fuck them. They are you, Bahas. Um, and then as we speak, we're like, we're talking shit about, um, talking shit about Theo and the Trinity gang. And Toba's like, oh, they're outside. Uh, I even told Betsy about how Trinity Gang is um, making fun of Thomas and how they're making fun of other people. Um, they're being a bitch about Tova at some point in last Friday Film 32, like last semester Friday 32. So we left the soundstage, went outside of the building, and boom, at a round table, the usual suspects have arrived. Theo, Trinity Gang, except for Ava. And I think Red showed up in a St. Patrick suit. And um, I, I greeted them, I acted really nice, and I bet Tova was even a little impressed, like, ooh, Enoch is acting. He's acting nice to them, like, ooh, detective at work, sheesh. But yeah, I, like, I just fit in, I just, I just managed to fit in and just started speaking to Theo and started speaking to everyone. They all seem really chill, but you know something's cooking underneath, I can feel it. Thomas shows up and Jaden immediately started like socializing with Thomas, socializing by asking him ridiculous questions like, oh, you know, I forgot what they asked, but they were like, oh, maybe Cuchillo is going to make you a singer because you have such an angelic, beautiful voice. And then Thomas awkwardly smiles and was like, oh, no, no, no. Thomas is older than them, right? Like, oh, what the fuck? Um, but they never decide to bully me. Because they probably feel a certain smart aura coming from me. Like, yeah, I'm a fluffy, cute person, but that's just the surface. Gotta be careful. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, essentially, that's that. At some point, we all moved up to room two, uh, 216 uh, in the conference room for the table read. So we went there, giant conference room, long table, but not nearly long enough to fit all of us in there. Because holy shit, I'd say 95% of the whole class showed up. Everyone except for Orson and Anna, Andrew and Skylar, Ava and Bree. Aside from these six people, everyone showed up. And also uh, all the professors. Cuchillo, Antonio, Drew, the Indian professor. And then also I think four other people I've never seen before. One of which is uh, the one Michelle warned me about. Cuchillo's son's best friend. Also Cuchillo's personal favorite. The writer-director of Azizum. And uh, he is the guy who wrote the script today. So after some quick introduction, uh, we moved into uh, reading the script. The script is called Ends and Means. And hear me out. It is a story about an undocumented Latina single mom living in Santa Monica, struggling. Of course, of course, of course, of course, of course. This is the most basic thing that you could definitely see. It, it caters so directly to Cuchillo's taste. It's almost hilarious. But here's the catch. He works for a film producer. And... And... Um, the film producer is working with another guy who is part of the Mexican cartel. Turns out, this guy from the cartel is exactly the same guy who killed her husband and raped her. So, as an act of revenge, she decided to put rat poison in guacamole and poison the cartel guy and the film producer. And then she escapes. That's the whole short film. Honestly, kind of fucking lame. But also, leagues more interesting than whatever shit we produced. Uh, we college, we the college produced last semester. 
So even though it sounded very lame, I was also very excited for some reason. And I just sat up straight and I put my arms on the table and I was ready to raise my hands and ask questions. Everybody raised their hands and asked questions. Almost everyone did it. Especially people like Red and Benny. And um, Theo didn't do that all that much, but Carly did a lot of that. And uh, we're all really um, positive and energetic about it. We asked a lot about different scenes, the narrative, her motives, the moral ambiguity of the story, um, sort of the production design, maybe the use of cinematography. But um, yeah, and we basically talked for two hours and Cuchillo seemed pretty nice and down for all of our opinions and ideas. And everyone seemed to get along, even the Indian professor. Uh, got to raise his hands a couple of times and talked and he he has some amazing talking points the indian professor because people were kind of confused like okay why did the main character kill the film producer as well when the film producer is so nice to her and then the indian professor was like well when i've interviewed many murderers and people always didn't believe him and i didn't believe him at first too i thought he's joking but actually he's probably serious because the Indian professor has made a documentary about prisoners. But anyways, I digress. The Indian professor said when a murderer gets the notion to murder, logic completely goes out the window. So maybe the main character didn't even think about collateral damage. And uh, Antonio also raised his hand and made a reference to Once Upon a Time in the West by Sergio Leone. And said, oh, you know, revenge. And, you know, maybe maybe the main character wants herself to be recognized before she makes the kill. But yeah, essentially that's that. And uh, whew, it's quite interesting. Really, really quite interesting. I really wanted to say something to impress the Indian professor. Uh, and also Cuchillo, but mainly the Indian professor. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I raised my hands a couple times and talked about... I asked what period this is. Like what period this is in and they're like oh yeah present day and then i said um um yeah we should definitely make the film producer guy more of an asshole because you know he speaks spanish even though he's not a native spanish speaker and cuchillo laughed at that and then the second time i raised my hand i talked about how um you know i agree with the indian professor i didn't say that but i said yeah logic is out of the window and maybe we should use cinematography to show that I think Carly at some point echoed me and was like, oh, like Enoch said, he talked about the production design and uh, I want to add on to that. And then at one point, Jonathan said, Jonathan called me back and was like, oh yeah, like, you know, like Enoch said, I think there's sort of this confusing element of whether the main character wants to kill the film producer guy or not. So yeah, I was being acknowledged at least. Thomas raised his hands a lot and... The moment, the only time Thomas got called, you know, and he gets to speak, he says some bullshit thing that Cuchillo just doesn't agree with. Because Thomas was like, oh, this killing decision, it seems so out of the blue. And then Benny, oh my god, Benny is in deep shit. Um, Benny kept on saying shit like, oh, what if, uh, what if he, like, there's another son... And the flashback, and then the son shows up in present day, and then the main character tells a son to put a hit on this cartel boss, and then like assassinate this boss. And Cuchillo was fed up with him. And then Benny raises his hands again and talks about how, oh, maybe at the end of the short film, the main character sees a priest, and the priest is having sex with hookers in the streets. And then Cuchillo was like, Benny, are you serious or are you joking? And Benny's like, no, no, I'm serious. And then Cuchillo's like, okay, next. And Benny's like, no, 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 hear me out. And then Cuchillo's like, okay, next. And then it's just like, there is tension. And Cuchillo's like, wow, at least I really get to know who you are today. So yeah, Benny's the first one to die. Benny really is going to be the first one to die in film 33. It's set in stone. But yeah, afterwards, I didn't have a chance to speak to the Indian professor. I did have a chance to speak with Antonio out of anyone and we had pizza because they expected this table read to go late it ended at around 8 p.m honestly and uh, they brought like five gigantic thin crusted pizzas one mozzarella one pepperoni i had two slices 
I ate some salad as well, even though nobody had them aside from me and Liana. And then we all just stood around and talked to each other. And uh, yeah, as far as I know, nobody's applying for director aside from Red and Yulia. Yulia wants to apply for all three because Yulia is really ambitious. And half the class is applying for lead producer, which is going to be very interesting. And I think I can secure a spot being UPM. My only competition is Liana. Liana told me she wants to be UPM as well, but she said, oh, we can work this out. Like, as long as I'm in the production team, it's fine. And I'm like, me too. So um, I and Liana can work this out. And I basically socialized with every single soul, everyone. I really spoke with everyone. Birkin is so dead set about being a lead producer. Benny also wants to be a producer, but we all know the teachers will not choose him. Um, and um, yeah, everything's set. I pretty much know about everyone's ideal roles. And um, that's it. Originally, Thomas wants to drive me home, but um, Thomas was like, no, um, you know what? I don't think I will drive you home. Like, uh, Trinity's gang wants to hang out with me. So I'm like, okay. And Trinity Gang brought him to some restaurant, some diner or someplace, which is very suspicious given that they probably don't respect Thomas. So I don't know what's going on there. Meanwhile, me, Eric, Tova, Jonathan, a couple other people stayed behind and chatted a little bit outside of the building. It was nighttime already, nearly nine. And um, at the end, it's just me, Eric, and Jonathan, and I really wanted to go back home. Um, Jonathan complained about David. Oh yeah, at some point I took out a hentai. I was like, oh wait, do you want to look at my hentai? And they're like, what? Like real hentai? Like, are you serious? And in my backpack, I really pulled out a book of hentai, which is ridiculous. But I did it because I'm the detective and I am never predictable. Um, And then that's it. We talked about people a little bit. We talked about, ooh, getting into film 33. What's my ideal role? Blah, 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 blah. I'm not interested in any of this conversation at all. And then it's just me, Eric, and Jonathan. And they kept on talking and talking and talking. Jonathan kept on showing memes on TikTok. I fucking hate TikTok. I will never download that shit in my life. You go have fun. I want to go home. So I was going to walk away and take a bus back home. But then Eric's like, oh, Eric, you know, don't worry. I can drive you back home. And I'm like, okay, thank you. Thank you so much. And then I just stood there and waited for 40 fucking minutes. I kept on making hints that I want to leave. Like I backed off i turned around with my body language to show that hey you know i'm i'm gonna leave um um but they kept on talking and then we slowly made our way to the car park and they still kept on talking jonathan was like oh yeah anime expo i went there like four four years in a row and then i was gonna leave and he's like oh whoa, whoa, whoa. um oh you know uh, in 2018 i went to uh Anime Expo and I played XFX Tentacion's music on the loudspeakers and these anime fans started uh, moshing and then I'm like, okay. And then he's like, oh, wait, wait, wait one more thing. So when we were uh, playing XFX Tentacion's music, there was this girl and she was wearing this wig and she started like headbanging and then I'm about to leave. And she's like, no, 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 one more thing. One more meme. And it's just like, God damn, just let me go, please. Like they're nice dudes, but fuck, I gotta go home. So at the end, at um, at 8.40 something, Eric drove me back home real quick. Spoke with Eric a little bit about um, um, Ella's birthday. Eric still hadn't made the decision whether he wants to join in or not. But that's that. Got back home, cooked myself some simple spaghetti and leftover steak. Boom, that's it. Enough calories for the day. A um, couple more things. I spoke to Leslie about the night owl thing. Leslie knows about this. I asked her, how do you know this? She said, oh, some frat guys reposted this so on Instagram. So I just found out about this. And apparently Leslie has been to one of their parties, but Leslie hate parties and doesn't want to go ever again, uh, unless she's going with friends. And I told her I've never been to one, but I'm here in California. I want to experience at least once. And then that's pretty much it. And then another thing is while speaking to Leslie, I suddenly received an email from none other than CSU Long Beach saying that I got in. But it's a conditional offer, but it basically means I got in. 
And I was a little underwhelmed that I had to find out through an email and not through an epic dramatic reaction. Um, but um, yeah, it's really pleasing to find out. A little bit later, Eric asked me that, and Eric said he didn't get into Long Beach narrative production, aka film production, but he got into film theory. Yikes. Um, I'm not surprised. Eric's personal statement is probably not that great in her sh his short film. I'm not, I'm going to be honest here, not great at all. Um, but yeah, I got in, so that's nice. Um, so I got into CSUN, sort of, got into Long Beach, definitely. Yay. All right, time now is 2.16 a.m. in the morning. I'm eating some oranges. Oh my God. I just had a two and a half hour long phone call with Michelle. Went on so long. I just want to go to bed early. I just want to stop the phone call so that I could go to the kitchen and cut up some oranges and eat it and go to bed. But yeah, um, I got a list of things that I want to talk about. Um, first of all, a bunch of small things. When we were in the conference room doing the table read at some point, Javier showed up there outside of the conference room and looked at me. Betsy showed up outside of the conference room with an acting professor, an old woman, talking to Antonio because she wants to introduce Antonio and this acting professor to each other. Another thing is um, Alba disappeared. Alba, the Mexican girl, she fucking disappeared. I was speaking to Cliff um, today um, and that was one of the minor things that I wanted to ask her about because Michelle asked me about it and that is what the hell is wrong with Alba? Alba, the producer, is supposed to show up in the editing sessions of WOW. But she's been missing. And I mentioned this to Cliff, and Cliff said, oh yeah, it's kind of weird. She disappeared. She didn't read any emails. She didn't respond to any emails. She didn't respond to any Instagram DMs. The last conversation she had with Cliff, Cliff had with Alba, was uh, in January when Alba randomly texted Cliff, Asking him how's the editing of WoW going and Cliff was like, great, how have you been doing? Where are you? And then Alba didn't respond. I don't think she even read Cliff's text, which is very scary. There's something kind of eerie about it, like maybe she got murdered or something. I don't know if it's because I didn't have enough sleep this morning, but I don't know why, but I'm, I don't feel so right. Like there's something legitimately scary and mysterious something deeper and darker, like a conspiracy theory that even me, Michelle, and Betsy don't know. And me, Michelle, and Betsy right now are th arguably three of the most knowledged person in CMD right now. Like, we know the most drama, and I'm happy I'm in the top three. But something happened on the set of Alive. So before WoW, in, uh, in spring of 2022, Film 33 shot Alive, and something scary happened there something gruesome and horrifying happened there and nobody's talking about it michelle told me that she felt as though they're trying to hush it like some people are trying to silence what happened on the set of alive as far as i know patrick pa'd on the set and leia was a scriptee on the set as well so only two of them know the answer as far as i know um another moment is um before we enter the conference room um oh that's a piece of orange skin This is also really scary. I was calling Michelle and I told her about it. And I was like, oh my God. I suddenly had chills up my spine. I almost wanted to cry. Again, there's something so scary and dark about this. I don't know what the hell's going with, wrong with me. When we were outside the uh, building, we were at the round table. And it's just me, Tova, Red, Trinity, Gang, and Theo. Theo said... And she mumbled some. He mumbled something and it went past everyone's ears. He wanted to be the master of all PAs. He wanted to control all the PAs. Which is a horrifying thought. Theo enslaving people? That's fucked up. So, um... Thankfully, even though I don't have the guts or the power to defeat Theo, um, when it comes to PA, I think I can win. Because I'm close to Leslie, and Leslie can be used as a leverage against Theo. 
because uh, Theo is probably avoiding Leslie. And when I, when I told this to Michelle, Michelle was like, ooh, you're smart, you're learning. Also, I know so many other people, like Cliff, Javi, Justin, Miles. However, if Theo is going to be the camera operator, how? what the hell is he going to do with the PAs? Second of all, I think us getting PAs is going to be a way tougher this time around because... Uh, we're not going to be filming on the set, like on the soundstage in CMD. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, but yeah, it was so scary. Like Theo's clearly acting. Like Theo's acting really nice for some reason. And it's an act. And there's something really scary and dark and unpredictable in his mind right now. And I'm legit starting to fear him. Today's the first day I actually feared him. I've never felt this way before. Like... I legit felt goosebumps at some point. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I feel something so off about him. Um, and then um, at the very end of the table read, I spoke with um, Antonio and asked him about the letters of recommendation. He said he sent them to USC already like a couple weeks ago. And I'm like, really? And he's like, yeah, I really remember that I uploaded it and sent it. And he's like, okay, I'll double check. Send me an email to double check it. Uh, next thing you know is uh, I brought hentai to school today and I took it out and Jonathan took a photo of me reading the fucking hentai. It was late at night. It was near 9 p.m. And he decided to put it on an Instagram story and send it out to his close friends. And I told him, please don't do it. And he's like, it's close friends. It's fine. So yeah, apparently only Tyler and Sidlali are in his close friends. Um, but apparently the girl that he's dating, a hot Filipino girl is also there. And um, she saw it, and I was like, bro, it's on you. Um, yeah. So my phone call with Michelle was really long and wind winding and a lot of scary moments um, with what's happening to Alba, with Theo's being unpredictable. We talked about Betsy a lot because Betsy is definitely um, really, really pissed. And Betsy told Michelle that she has conjured multiple plans to defeat Cuchillo, one of which is um, to invite an Indian prince to come to the college to teach, which is going to be a big fuck you middle finger to Cuchillo. Betsy described the situation that the CMD is in right now as World War I, and um, she found a bullet that is going to assassinate Franz Ferdinand. And that bullet is Dane, because Dane hates Cuchillo, and Dane has apparently written a complaint to Cuchillo, so Betsy's going to use him as a bullet. And in fact, Betsy didn't even tell all her master plan to Michelle. She's going to write it down on a notepad or something. It's a very layered and complex plan. So uh, I don't know if this is true or not, but holy shit, Betsy is really going to war with Cuchillo which may sabotage my class and may even be a threat to my class, which is a huge twist. And Michelle even warned me, like, even though I can be friends with Tova, don't tell Tova everything. Because Tova, at the end of the day, is on Betsy's side. And if I tell Tova something that Betsy doesn't like, Betsy can use it against anyone. And that would be on my responsibility. Um, But yeah, that's basically that. Uh, apparently, Betsy started from humble beginnings. Betsy studied in CSUN a while ago, and then she said fuck it and went into my college for film. And um, Michelle had humble beginnings too in the beginning. Like, Michelle was hesitant and didn't want to get close to power, but she ended up getting close to power, and I did too. Um, and uh, the final thing to talk about is um, there's a rat in our Discord server. Somebody told Cuchillo that we have a Discord server. Um, which is concerning because I don't want this to be a repeat of what happened to me in Form 2. Like, um, yeah, like, I just, I don't know, I, ju I just don't want this to be a repeat of what happened in Form 2 where the teachers find out about the WhatsApp group and deleted the whole thing and we all got fucked this cannot happen especially on a college level so um i told um i told michelle to immediately find out who the rat is asap so that i can be careful around him or her 
yeah, that's pretty much it. Leslie is starting to get really interesting. Oh yeah, um, also, um, Betsy went to Rustam's house today. Rustam, the Kazakhstani, the Kazakh, uh, who was basically the guardian spirit of CMD before Leslie came. Rustam said, oh fuck, that's orange juice splattered all over my face. Rustam said, um, he and Cuchillo are, um, beefing and he's not speaking to Cuchillo. Something horrible happened, apparently. And, um, Rustam said Leslie is in big trouble because Leslie is the second Rustam and Cuchillo will exploit Leslie and Leslie will be broken very soon. I don't know why, but, um, given that Theo, um, uh, given that, um, Pepper's out of the conversation now. Both Pepper and Aoba are out of the conversation now, and I'm happy they're out of the conversation because I'm, they are sparing themselves of so much pain and suffering by staying out of film 33. Meanwhile, I'm at the epicenter of it all. Um, but Leslie's also whirled up in this whirlpool of drama and horror. Um, and given that she's a pretty interesting person and she breaks easily and she has anxiety issues, like, maybe I should also, like, you know, help her out a little bit, you know? Yeah. Oh, man, so fucking, I don't even know, man. Like I said, if a girl has the restraint of Aoba, the looks of Pepper, and the personality of, of Leslie, like, I would honestly, genuinely consider dating. Um, and I wouldn't say Leslie looks great. But she really has a really interesting personality. And she's really unpredictable. And I do like an unpredictable person. If I want drama from Wednesday 32 and Leslie refuses to tell me, I would be really impressed. I would be really satisfied, actually. I like a girl who refuses. Um, so, uh, yeah, we'll see. But it's funny, because while I was calling Michelle, um, Leslie randomly DM'd me on Instagram saying... Welcome to Film 33, because I made an Instagram story saying insanity ensues, you know, so, um, damn, I know so much now, I know so much horrifying shit, it's kind of crazy, um, I know so much about Leslie, I know what she's going to go through, sort of, I know so much about Cliff, um, Michelle's really into Cliff, but Michelle's also questioning whether she actually has a crush on Cliff or not. She finds him mysterious, which I find really funny because I don't find him mysterious at all. But I would also use the same exact vocab. Oh, Justin's texting me. I would find the exact, I would use the same exact vocab to describe Mary, my first crush, mysterious. So you know what? Maybe Michelle's feelings for Cliff is valid. So yeah, crazy. I'm going to bed. Fuck it. All right. Time now is uh, 1.31 p.m. on March 18th. Uh, yeah, I slept from 4 to 1.30, I think. Um, oh, man. So I last night I went to the bathroom um, and the toilet got clogged. And th this is like the 2000th time this had happened to me. So as usual, I get the pump, the plunger, and I just boop, 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 boop. Um, it didn't work. So I did it again and again and again and again and again and again and again, and it didn't work. Ah. Uh, I did it for like half an hour and at the end I, I'm like, you know what, I give up. So I just took a shower and went to bed. Um, and then I thought, this, cause this is weird. Usually after I plunge five, six times, it's just gonna flush. Maybe it's, something's wrong with the toilet itself. Like it's not opening like, or something like there's a gate, like there's a valve or something. So I thought maybe if I wait until next morning, it's gonna be gone. And I was right. Today, this morning, when I woke up after I went to the bathroom, it's gone. All the water is gone. It's just completely gone. 
So I'm like, oh, yay, that's great. So, you know, I took a piss. I flushed it. And then suddenly it's filled to the brim again. So I don't know what the fuck happened. So I'm going to plunge it again a little later. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to call Triple Link. I'm going to call for their help. Because this shit's stupid. Um, so yeah, that's, that's that. Um, uh, oh, frick, I'm gonna, I'm in my pajamas now, which means I'm gonna do some exercises. I'm debating whether I should do it or not, but I really don't know when's the next time I get the chance. Um, today's a Saturday. I will not go anywhere. Maybe I'll go to Nijia Market. Um... Yeah, I think I will go to Nijio Market today and have a sushi night for dinner. Um, and um, that's pretty much it. I'm going to keep today simple. You know, a couple reviews. Uh, edit Japan, edit college video. Boom, boom, boom. I'm going to watch a movie. Last night I planned to watch a film. A woman on the verge of a nervous attack. A nervous breakdown. Couldn't watch it because of my... Super long phone call with Michelle. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely um, interested in what's going to happen now. And uh, yeah, I also want to know more about how um, Cuccio is going to exploit Leslie or something. The lore thickens. The lore really thickens. Um, it's just kind of awesome how far I've come. Like... In secondary school, I used to know nothing. Now I know everything. I just wish people like Natalie and others would see the person I've become and be proud of me. I'm truly useful now. So, uh, yeah, that's great. Oh, and then stupid art history college homework. That's going to take a while. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it for today. Um, not much else. Pepper. Huh. It's kind of funny how I don't even mention Pepper at all. Because Pepper's so out of the story that I don't even mention her all that much anymore. There are things Pepper said to me that I even forgot to say. Such as, um, she applied to Art Center College of Design um, in Pasadena. I didn't apply, but she did. Wish her the best. And then she also, um... Yeah, we talked about how um, she's going to go back to Hong Kong every summer. So this year's summer, she's going to go back. Um, that's what we talked about um, uh, when we walked back home last Tuesday. Um, I'm also thinking of going to church tomorrow because I don't think I will have the uh, opportunity to go to church in the next following few weeks. Um, because... Um, you know, if I do go to Ella's birthday party, that's going to reach all the way across Sunday. Um, and then, um, next Sunday I'll have to work for John L. Next, next Sunday I'll have to work for John L. And also, um, Cliff is planning to make a short film in early April. So probably around that time as well. And, um, yeah, um, and then in spring break, I don't want to spend a Sunday morning at church if I can have friends. If I have a lot more friends and if I have a lot more connections, I want to hang out with them. I want to actually enjoy spring break for the first time. Let's aim for that, okay? Um, I want to have a very memorable spring break, okay? Please. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Okay, let's try the St. Patrick's minty flavor. I don't even know if it's mint, but uh, let's try it. Yay! Yay! Alright, this is what I got from Nijio Market. $39, I got cow piss. Oh boy, um, never bought this before. Got a cup noodle, got some sprouts, got some, I uh, got a bread, got a salad, got Angus beef 
uh, sort of beef slices. Uh, also got milk tea because I'm thirsty. And then for tonight, I got croquette. I got um, Inari sushi and uh, the other kind, I don't know what's the name. And then finally, uh, onigiri. This, it's either this or the plum. I can't find any other versions, so that's it. All right, time now is 10.18 uh, p.m. Let's wrap it up today. Nothing happened today. I didn't do anything important. I uh, filmed a mini movie review. I um, uh, watched an episode of anime. I'll watch a movie later. Um, I'm doing a little homework. I'm editing a little bit. I went to Nijo Market. Nothing important happened. There's nothing to report. Uh, not really, uh, anyways. So the clogged toilet issue, I fixed it this morning. Thank God. I'm so grateful that it's fixed. I plunged it maybe 20 times. It finally worked. I just had to plunge it really fucking hard. But it worked now, so that's great. I hope it never happens again. Um, when I went out to buy food at Nijo Market, maybe it's the time issue like because it was around 6 30 and um the sky was particularly cloudy and the weather was kind of cold and for some reason when i looked at the you know the views in front of me it looked very hd it looked very high definition for some reason and suddenly i feel a sense of coldness and a sense of loneliness like a sense of loss like i don't know why it's been a long time since i since i felt that way maybe it's because i had watched an episode of made in abyss before i left and that sort of made an imp impact on me because that anime sort of took me to a different world but usually that doesn't happen but for some reason i felt some sort of um loss and coldness and melancholy and suddenly i felt very sad like um, it doesn't feel like the end of the world. It just feels so quiet and abandoned. So it's, I don't know why I feel that. And that's something that a Californian shouldn't really feel like often because of how exciting and bright Los Angeles always is. But for some reason, today is a rare moment where I truly felt that. And it's weird. I just, it really dawned on me that it's been a while since I've gone through one of my sad phases. I think the last time I've gone through a sad phase, it was, I don't know. Last time I really went through a really like sad and mentally broken period was in late March, uh, actually late April to mid-May last year. I was sad at some point, I think, um, at around November or, or something like during COVID days, but it wasn't particularly sad i was sad for like a couple days when i went back to hong kong again um in the winter i was sad for a little while as well at first when i went back to hong kong over the summer oh and i was definitely a little troubled when i came back to la after summer but it's been a long time you know back in four and five and six i get sad every two weeks and now I'm so mentally stable and my mind is at peace so much that something's off. And I don't know why, but maybe it's me focusing on writing The Virgin, my script. Maybe it's me feeling a storm brewing. Maybe it's me feeling that history will repeat again. This will be formed two all over again. The drama, the fighting, me being the detective, it's going to happen again. There's just something apprehensive about it something ominous about it and I feel like I always predict that I'm going to go through a, ser um, uh, a period of mental distress in maybe a late April or something I feel like it's coming I could feel it coming and it's a little scary um so yeah I, I really don't know um I spoke with Cliff a little this morning I further questioned him about um what happened to alba the mexican girl he truly doesn't know which is really weird even amy the director of wow and antonio do not know where alba is which is really scary and um cliff said he's not free to watch a david lynch film with me 
as of now, so that's kind of fortunate. Um, to be fair, that saves me a little money. Um, but yeah, that's that. He's free on Saturday to watch Blue Velvet, but A, Blue Velvet, I wouldn't say it's my favorite Lynch film. B, on that day, on that Saturday, I'm going to watch Seven Samurai. So I don't know. But yeah, I spoke with Michelle again a little bit, updating her on a little couple of things like, you know, nobody knows Alba, where Alba is, blah, blah, blah. Um, Michelle hasn't found out who the rat is in our Discord. Um, and she um, still doesn't know where Alba is. Apparently, Patrick is friends with Alba, so Michelle's going to ask Patrick about this. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it so far. In the Discord server for Film 33, Anna, who didn't show up for the table read and didn't show up for the last class either, she suddenly said, um, this is pre-planned the whole time. You know, this is a... Uh, apparently, in the last semester, Cuccio was already planning for um, this this guy to write a script for this film 33, meaning that um, this semester, whatever we submit, we're going to fail. And it's all like, it's all part of his plan. You know, it's all part of his master plan. And it's this huge conspiracy. I already knew about this a little earlier, thanks to Michelle. Um, but yeah, pretty wild. Um... Yeah, uh, but yeah, not much else, really. Uh, tomorrow, I've decided to go to church, which is going to suck. I'm not going to sleep a lot, but it's okay. Um, oh, wait, it's 1024 now. Um, lucky number. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I just want to tell Pepper that she's lucky that she's not in film 33, because whatever is going to happen this semester, it's going to be hell. And Michelle even said it's going to be worse than last semester. And now, Betsy and Michelle are not in it, but I'm in it. I am the one who's going to go through it. I will survive. I am. <laughs> this is like conspiracies next level. Not going to lie, conspiracies is still more interesting, but this is also really interesting. And um, it's finally happening. This insanity is uh, happening. Um, yeah, I, I'm just curious... So Michelle is going to talk to Betsy today, or have already talked to her, but I'm just curious what's... Because Rustam always, is always quiet. Rustam is always quiet. He's always, he doesn't speak much. So out of nowhere, he told Betsy all this, all these things about how Cuchillo will exploit Leslie. And this made me want to, I guess, be all gentleman-ish and warn Leslie about this and hopefully protect her especially given how mentally fragile she is. I mean, I'm also pretty mentally fragile. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Um, let's hope I could do something about this. And um, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. I also have like new acne, like fuck off, okay? Oh, and I forgot to report what I had for dinner. Um, Inari sushi, that other type of sushi. I can only find this one box of sushi. You can't find other kinds. Um, I'm going to drink cow piss later. I had one slice of pork chop because I thought, oh, yeah, I don't have any meat this dinner. And at first I'm like, you know what? It's fine because there are vegans out there. Vegans exist. I don't have to eat meat every meal. But then I realized, you know what? Fuck it. I'll have a meat. So I had a slice of pre-cooked pork chop. And then I had a, I had um, um, on, uh, onigiri, um, okaka onigiri, and then uh, this tofu salad. And that's pretty much it. Okay, the air vent is on again. Great. Time now is 7.52 a.m. On, uh, on March 19th. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, just woke up. Fuck, shut up, please. It detects, if it detects any small amount of moisture, it just magically turns on. So yeah, I went to bed at 3.20 and uh, and I woke up at uh, 7.45 but for some freaking reason I couldn't fall asleep for like at least half an hour to an hour and then I had the worst sleep of all times, suddenly. I, 
couple days ago, I had one of the greatest sleep I've had, and then now I had an awful sleep. I think I woke up at least three times. I never went into deep sleep at all. It was so hot. I don't know what's going on with the weather, but like I felt really hot. I was sweating, and I had to take off this shirt and sleep topless. Um, yeah. And even so, I still woke up from time to time. I it was really hot. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Um, I had a dream where it's like we're about to go to space. Me and all the Film 33 students. Except they're not really Film 33 students. I don't really know them. But, um... Something big is about to happen and I'm the only one awake inside the dream. Like, it was like nighttime or something. It was like in the middle of the night or something and I was the only one awake. Um... Fuck you, shut up. Why is the air vent so aggressively loud? Okay. Um, but um, yeah. So today is Sunday and um, I'm going to church. I didn't have to and I will gain nothing from it, but I decided to go anyways out of courtesy and also because um, I know I won't be able to go in the next few Sundays and the next time I go will probably be May or something um so yeah you know um and i'm not even sleepy right now i don't know why maybe maybe it'll hit me very very soon um but um yeah um usually on sundays i have to wake up at 8 for church but um today i'm waking up at 7 45 because the church teacher will have to pick up another person, a woman, who lives at Culver City. So that's why I need to wake up earlier. But yeah, essentially today I'm going to go to church, have lunch outside hopefully, come back home. And then I will, um, there's this huge art history class college homework that I have to finish. Um, uh, this comparative paper thing. So I need to really work on that. Yesterday wasn't that productive, but I managed to do most of the things I planned to do. I managed to finish watching a movie. I watched one, one episode of anime instead of four, and I did a little homework and I edited Japan vlog a little bit. So I wanted to do more of that today. Um, but yeah, not much else really. Um, if I really have time, I really want to focus back on editing my Japan vlogs. Also, I realized I hadn't tried the protein powder inside my cabinet. I need to try that shit. Um, and work out more often. Uh, the workout I had yesterday morning wasn't nearly enough. And then, um, oh man, I'm beginning to get sleepy. It's beginning to hit me. I probably only slept for about two hours. If the temperature is not right, I can't sleep. If the brightness is not right, I can't sleep. Okay? Um, yeah. Let's see. I guess not much else. Um, yeah. Mm. 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 Sakuma okay. Let's see if I have any hope here. All right, it's two forty, bro. Two forty-seven. Let's have lunch. Fuck, I'm so hungry. This is gyudon. Ugh. I should have gone to that Yoshinoya at Narita Airport. Now I'm craving gyudon, and this probably isn't all that great.
try this. 280 calories. Ooh, damn, son. All right, time now is um 3:41 p.m. Um yeah, let's talk about this morning a little bit. Uh woke up at 8:15, picked up by the church teacher, um went to uh Culver City to pick up another woman and then went to the church. We were late by about 10 minutes. No worries. Uh, at first there were no seats at the balcony of the church. Um, which is the place I go all the time. So we sat outside for a little bit and then we got in and by a little bit, I mean like three minutes and then we got into the balcony and then we just sat and, um, I was really sleepy. It really hit me. The fact that I only slept for about two to three hours today, this morning and with poor sleeping quality. Um, yeah, it really hit me and, uh, Almost fell asleep, but um, I didn't straight up fall asleep and start fishing like I always do in the last semester. Um, but yeah, and then we, and then it started raining a little bit. I went to the gymnasium of that place to get a small slice of cake, a uh, chocolate cake, which is great because I only had a Hokkaido milk bun for breakfast. And then, um, and then on top of that, we went to the Sunday school and it was so fucking boring. There are three church teachers. One is the old man, the pharmacist who drives me to school. He's the best. The other is the cardiologist who is the more entertaining one. And then we have the woman who is the most boring one. Her lecture just went on and on and on and on. And I can tell everyone's getting impatient. I'm blanking out, everyone's blanking out, people started using their phones. Even the other church teacher, the cardiologist, he started yawning and he started joking around. It's clear that everybody wants to go home. It's dragged on way too long. Usually Sunday school ends at 12 at afternoon, sharp. Today it ended at 12.20. We were so impatient. And when uh, the woman was like, oh, one more slide. Like some people were even joking like, oh, one more, okay. So yeah, um, that's that. And during Sunday service, I ate one gigantic uh, siomai, which is great. So I was thinking maybe I would go have lunch somewhere with other people. Turns out that didn't happen. Um, yeah, so at the end, the cardiologist decided to drive me home. And then the church, the other church teacher, the old man was like, hey, uh, maybe you would want to buy something on the way back home. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, I mean, I don't have a lot of good food at home. I mean, I'm serious. If I do directly go home, which I didn't plan, I would just eat fucking instant noodles with an egg and sausage on top, which is depressing as hell. But that's actually what I'm planning to eat tomorrow lunch anyways. Um, <laughs> but you know, might as well, I'm outside now. So the cardiologist drove me to Little Tokyo to that one mall that I always go. Uh, to the little um, uh, supermarket there. Um, and I found a place where I could eat gyudon. And I'm like, man, I've been craving for some gyudon for a couple of months now. Kind of want to eat that. So I ordered gyudon. But before that, I went around the supermarket to see if I can luck out and see if there are any red sakuma drops. And I went to the snack section. Nope, can't find it. I wish I could really just stand there and really ob observe and look at all the shelves, but I just don't have that amount of time or that energy. And also before that, the cardiologist asked me if I want to get the French dip. Um, and I said, uh, now is not the, I don't have the energy for that. Like, I'm not feeling that. Which is true, but also I, I just want to go to the freaking Japanese supermarket to see if there are any Sakuma drops. Yeah, I got myself gyudon, $13, really cheap, and it sucks. It's easily the worst bowl of gyudon I've ever had in my life. The beef is chewy, it's burnt. It's usually with gyudon, you use a fat cut of beef and you slice it up very thin. You would have actual beef sauce instead of teriyaki sauce. 
and you would have onions in it. A gyudon is not complete without onions. There are no onions in that thing. And instead, there is a half a chunk of boiled carrot and some boiled broccoli. Can you be more American than this? What the fuck? So, uh, yeah, it's act absolute freaking garbage. Garbage gyudon. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, and then, um, the, the cardiologist teacher bought something and went back to his car and I got a little spare time. So I'm like, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to go to the Daiso over there and check out if they have second mud drops. I went there, took a sneak peek. Nope. That's it. I'm leaving. I also got the film camera with me. I took a few photos. Um, but yeah, that's it. Came back home. I have a stomach ache. So I went to the bathroom first, took a shower and, uh, did lunch and that's pretty much it. Um, the cardiologist teacher also bought me this chunky green mochi thing, which is apparently 280 calories. Holy shit. So, uh, yeah, I'm full right now. That's enough calories for the day. And, um, I'm not going to Ralph's today. I'm going tomorrow. I'm not going today because I have this freaking art history class homework. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's that. Not much else. I guess I sort of forgot to mention that Cliff went to the beach yesterday for the ISF. The International Student Forum holds these events. And I've been wanting to go to them for a while because I want to socialize with people, meet more people, make more friends, A, but also B, meet other Hong Kongers, if you know what I mean. But, uh, I never had the chance to because nobody wants to go. And I don't want to go alone like an idiot. I'm not that extroverted. Turns out Cliff went, so I, which I didn't expect because Cliff is such a huge introvert, but I guess he's not as introverted as me. So I don't know. I hope there's another event thing and I could go with Cliff someday. And I am pretty sure one of the Hong Kongers actually went there. If I look at Discord, there's a Hong Kong user who I don't know who he or she is, but they've, they went to the beach as well. If I had gone yesterday, I would have met him or her. Um, so, uh, yeah, you know. I don't know, man. I really don't know. Also, it's getting really fucking hot. Um, I don't know why. Um, oh, yeah. And while I was having dinner, um, Candace's Colombian boyfriend, Michael, has returned. And he was like, Enoch, what's up, my man? Enoch. Kind of reminds me of Theo. I'm a little scared of shit like this now. Um, and he's wearing sports shoes inside the freaking apartment, stepping around with an electric bike. I uh, wish I don't mind. He's chill, I guess, but I, I don't want to be a weakling in front of him. So I confronted him, actually. I was like, oh, um, by the way, are you wearing shoes indoors usually? And he's like, oh, no, usually I wear flip-flops. But I'm about to go out. And I'm like, oh, okay. And he's like, I'm sorry, dude. Or he's like, oh, I'm about to go out, so I'm wearing it. And I'm like, oh, no worries. And he's like, thanks, man. <sighs> okay, yeah. <sighs> That's why I'm eating in my living room, in my own bedroom. <laughs> Literally speed ran cooking this. I cooked all this in 20 minutes. I'm a genius. All right, my Cheetos time now is 11 18 p.m. Um, let's wrap it up today. Nothing all that important happened today. I didn't go back to sleep as much as I want to. I would love to go back to bed. I did not because I am a man who controls himself. Um, oh, yeah, I just finished dinner. I rate, I rate my dinner 3 out of 10. It's two slices of thin pork chop. I swear to God, I fucking hate pork chops. I will not eat pork chops for the next fucking month. Um, which means I'll have to look for more other types of meat now. Fuck. It's been a while since I've had duck. Um, yeah, couple of slices of salt and pepper, pork chops, um, 
bok choy and mushroom and garlic fried together. It's so dry and salty for some reason. And then I had rice with it and that's the whole dinner. And I had to eat in my bedroom because um, Candace and her boyfriend Michael are eating outside. And I don't want to third wheel like a loser. So, yeah. Um... I mean, it's not the first time that it happened, so I don't really mind. Um, but yeah, truly nothing all that important happened. Um, I continue to have a lot of conversation with Michelle. Like, for the last few days, I've been speaking to Michelle every single day because I keep getting new updates. Thomas has been getting kind of weird. So Thomas, again, every single day Thomas has to find a fucking excuse to say something to me. Today, his excuse is... He wants to ask me, uh, how am I doing with the NYU applications? I haven't started. I'm sorry. I'm a procrastinator. I know. And then I was like, oh, you know what? This would be a great opportunity for me, for me to ask Thomas, what the hell did the Trinity gang do to him? Like, did they perform a lobotomy on him and change his genetics and, uh, like, fucking hypnotize him to assassinate me? Like, what's the deal? Um, so, uh, I asked him and he's avoiding the question. Oh, oh, so I asked him again and he's like, why are you curious? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm just curious. Like, did they say anything to you or do anything to you? And he's like, what do you mean? And I said, well, like, w did they say anything about their ideal positions? Cause I heard they're into the art department, but I'm not sure. Of course I'm lying. I have ulterior motives. Trinity gang is dangerous. They're fucking dangerous people. And I need to know if they have done something wrong. I need to get my fingers in there. Because I'm the fucking detective, okay? And, um... Thomas was like, no, they didn't say anything in particular to me. They didn't mention anything about that. So I said, well, what do you talked about? And he's like, life. And I'm like, okay. I'm not gonna ask any further. Because let's be honest here. If the Trinity gang wants something from Thomas... What they're going to do to him is, uh, you know, say random meaningless shit to him. Because the point of the whole conversation is to be friendly. So I don't have to worry about that part. And then I asked Thomas the golden question. Is Theo there and is Carly there? Theo is someone that I absolutely do not trust. And my number one most dangerous person in film 33. And Carly, she is the lesser dangerous person. Someone I can actually trust. Carly isn't there. Theo was there. Fucking A, baby. Fucking A. I immediately told Michelle. And Michelle was like, oh shit. Now, now we're formally, we're seeing a pattern here now. We're seeing a freaking pattern. Last semester, Theo pulled Thomas to the side and set secrets to him. And now Theo is doing something with Thomas. Maybe he's trying to gain leverage against me using Thomas. Um, I don't even think Theo thinks of me as a threat as of this point. Unless Theo also has his own spy snooping around. But as of now, I know Theo's a problem. But I don't think Theo realizes that I know yet. But I guess one obvious thing is that Thomas is very naive and he's very gullible. And I think Theo was trying to use him as a lackey, as a crony. Um, so um, there's that. We're seeing a pattern here. And on top of that, Thomas opened a new Discord group between me, him, and Michelle. And the Discord group is called 33T, except instead of the T, it's the coffee emoji. Which is stupid as fuck. Um... And, um, of course, nobody said anything. Michelle texted me, like, what the heck is that? What is Thomas doing? And I'm like, I don't know. But either way, I won't be saying shit to Thomas because now that I know Thomas may speak things to Theo, um, you know, I'll be careful. Not worth the risk. Um, yeah, um, I spoke with Cliff a little bit about the ISF beach thing. Um, Cliff did go to the... ISF beach thing yesterday. Um, I hope whatever ISF comes up next, I'll go just because I want to know more Hong Kongers. Apparently, Cliff met someone from his own state in Malaysia, his own province. Like, 
if I could meet someone from Hong Kong Island, I would be shook, okay? Because Pepper, Potter, JT, they're all from Kowloon. I haven't met a single soul who's from Hong Kong Island. Um, I think, yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, that's the plan. Um, and then today, Leslie went to watch a concert in LA, which is pretty interesting. So I DM'd her, I'm like, whoa, who and where is this? And that's late at night. She said, oh, it's a uh, Decca Join. And I'm like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> and then I searched it up. Turns out it's a Taiwanese indie rock band. Very nice. Very, very nice. And then I was like, oh, did you go alone? Ooh, she's like me for real, for real. She's going to concerts alone, like a loner. And then out of curiosity, I went to check other people's Instagram. Pepper made an Instagram story. She's in the same fucking concert. Oh, so not only did Leslie not go alone, but she also went with Pepper. Hmm. And then so Leslie replied, oh yeah, I went with Pepper. Okay. Well. Um... Yeah, that's the awkward part, man. Something's going on between me and Pepper. So I didn't tell Leslie about what's happened between me and Pepper. But Cliff told me, hey, next time if ISF holds something but I can't go, you can just ask Pepper. And I told Cliff, actually, I am, Ple I am Pepper. We're not really, we're not as close anymore. And Cliff was like, damn, what happened? And I said, I don't know. At some point in winter, we just randomly stopped talking to each other. And... <sighs> for some reason and then the next time we see each other it's awkward i don't know what's happening to to me between me and pepper i actually don't really care i'm happy pepper's out of film 33 because she's sparing herself from the pain and suffering um you know if pepper finds a boyfriend or whatever great for her i don't care but yeah you know that's that I don't know whether to be agitated or happy right now. I really don't know. I guess a little bit of both. I guess I'm not really happy, actually. Um, uh, but yeah, I was quite productive. I managed to finish editing a college video. I filmed and edited a review real quick. I actually finished the art history comparative paper thing on time before, uh, before dinner. And I, oh my god. I plan to go out and start cooking dinner at... 8 30 but the happy couple outside they are like cooking some risotto slowly and gradually i get it if i have a girlfriend i would love to cook risotto with them for one hour straight but i exist you know <laughs> so i just waited in my bedroom and i waited at the corridor i had my clothes changed and everything i even cooked started cooking my rice i chopped up all the garlic mushrooms and bok, dai bok choy and I just waited and waited and waited and I didn't wasn't able to start cooking until 10 30 and then I swear to god I finished cooking my whole meal in like 15 minutes I just microwaved the two pork chops I just um the rice is already ready in the rice cooker and then I just threw the garlic and the mushroom and the bok choy in a pan oil salt chicken powder boom 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 that's my meal I've never made dinner this fast before and it fucking sucks um but yeah, I also um, emailed uh, Professor Antonio about getting uh, aud auditioning for lead producer. I really don't know if it's a great idea or not, because if I really do get chosen, I and Michelle actually rehearsed a little bit, like, what sort of questions will Antonio ask? Michelle got the tea. Michelle knows, so I, I gotta, like, you know, I gotta hop onto it. Um. Yeah, um... Um, fuck, I don't know what's happening. I suddenly feel bad again. Cliff's going to the ISF yesterday. Leslie and Pepper hung out today. And I am a completely oblivious about this. Um, at the end of the day, everyone's got their own plans. Oh my God. I'm like, I'm having four and five flashbacks. Okay. Whew, Jesus. Um, but yeah, you know, if I do get chosen to be producer for my short, for this short film, for ends and means, 
I'll be fucked. I'll be psychologically tormented. As if I'm not psychologically tormented enough. Or as if I won't be psychologically tormented enough in late April because of the college decisions. Um, so I really don't know. So I'm going to audition just for fun. I spoke about this with Michelle and Michelle said, you know what? Just go for it. But I will make sure that I won't be as good. <laughs> like I will. I kind of want Birkin to be producer. If Birkin becomes a producer, A, he's a reliable guy. And he's good at taking the lead. B, if Birkin becomes producer, I get a fucking advantage. Because I made a deal with the guy. I made a deal with the guy. I'm smart about this. Game of Thrones, motherfucker. So, uh... Yeah, also, um... That... Colombian guy... Michael... Um... He has, like, Dragon Ball stickers. And he's like, Dragon Ball, do you watch it? And I'm like, no. I know what it is. No, I said, ooh, Dragon Ball. And he's like, oh, do you watch it? And I'm like, no. I watch the newer stuff, though. And he's like, what? And I said, oh, Attack on Titan, Jojo. And he's like, oh, so you're calling me old? And I'm like, nah. A little earlier, I saw him buying mangoes. I love mangoes. Favorite fruit, no cap. And I said, oh, mangoes. Are you going to, like, cook them or eat them as fruit? And he said, oh, eat them as fruit. And I'm like, nice. And he's like, oh, do you want some? I can give you one. And I'm like, nah. You know, rule number one, never take things from a stranger for free <clears throat> unless they are also a hong konger because um la is one big prison and in prison you don't take shit for free that's the number one rule um <laughs> but yeah fuck i'm getting form five flashbacks people hanging out without me knowing well to be fair i know now worst case scenario is that i don't even know what happened at least I know immediately, you know, because I DM Leslie. Leslie's also just really, like, forward and nice, I guess. I don't know. But part of me still wants to know Rustam's secret so that I would tell Leslie to warn her about what's going to happen to her. Hey, and maybe Leslie's going to tell Pepper a little bit about me, about how much of a detective I am and how much... World of an all's drama. I really don't care what Pepper thinks of me now. Pepper Raleigh thinks I'm a stinky ass, skinny ass, loser ass motherfucker. Pepper probably thinks I'm a weeb, shut in guy with no wrist, which is definitely true, actually. <laughs> I honestly don't care. Pepper can fuck off. Um. No, I wish her a great life, and, um, <sighs> I and Michelle exchanged quite a bit on, like, culture and stuff, like, I started to get really close with Michelle throughout the last few days, and I really started to tell her, like, about, like, my daily life stuff, not, not even drama stuff, just daily life stuff, like, what food I'm eating for dinner, and she's like, oh, what food are you eating? And I took a photo and sent it to her. And she's like, wow, that's bland. I don't know if it's you, but that's bland. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I wish I could have eaten something better. Like, I wish I could have had apple and pear soup, steamed fish, steamed eggs, celery, and beef with rice, like fried rice. And he's like, ooh, that sounds delicious. And then he start, she started asking me, like, what sort of food you eat in Hong Kong? And I'm like, bro, that question again? <sighs> I don't know how to explain. <laughs> So yeah, I tried to explain like what like the format of the food. I said, oh, in Hong Kong meals, usually most of the time. And again, it's weird because now, right now, I'm like representing the entire Hong Kong culture. I never had to do that before, but that's representation. And that's actually kind of scary and kind of a fallacy if you think about it. But anyways, I said, oh, you know, in Hong Kong, most meals, you have two types of things, rice and things that come with rice. And things that come with rice can be vegetables, meat, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, she's like, oh, yeah, it's like Persian food. And then she said she cooks Persian food. And when she visits her dad's side of the family, she also gets to eat Persian food. So that's that. But yeah, not much else. Surprisingly, I think, oh, she's sending me something, Michelle. Um, but yeah, I definitely actually think I, w I have the time to finish whatever I'm planning to do today. I'm going to edit some Japan vlog. I'm going to um, watch a few episodes of anime. And then that's it. I'm going to bed. And I think I have the time for that. I think. Hopefully. 
Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. Film 33, college app, NYU applications. I need to write that shit down. NYU applications, job search, driver's license. Uh, I want a girlfriend. Like, fuck me. Uh, I want to work out. Next Tuesday, leg day, okay? Every Tuesday is leg day. Every Friday is an upper body. That's the new canon. I want to try the new the, the protein powder I got in December. Haven't even tried it. Jacob the Chinese dude is so fucking buff. Like, his pecs are bursting out of his tank top. I don't want to be that, but at least I don't want to look like a stick. That's why I don't have girlfriend. Because I look like stick. I look like a matchstick. To be fair, match. I've seen matchsticks with hot girls before, but I'm Enoch. I'm born unlucky, okay? So yeah, no, that's pretty much it for today. Uh, hurrah. <laughs> I forgot to mention that um, Betsy got COVID. Yeah, so uh, yikes, Betsy got COVID. I hope I don't get it. I don't think I will. I think I, my antibodies are still there in my body. Um, and also Betsy did wear a mask most of the time when she's with me. Tova may get it though. Rooster may get it. Um, but yeah, last time I got COVID, I immediately got sick the day after. I didn't get sick yesterday or today, so I think I'm fine. Right? Yeah. 